In this video, we're going to be making a custom image using the image capture tool from a reference computer. Before we begin, there's a couple things we're going to need. We're going to need the reference computer and it's going to have to have Windows already loaded on it. Now, you can use a virtual computer or you can use a physical computer. There are a couple advantages to using a virtual computer, but if you are using a physical computer, it will work just as well. Just make sure you don't load all the drivers. The only driver you really need is going to be your NIC driver. So for this demonstration, I am going to be using a virtual computer and all I've done is load Windows 10 on this computer. And what I need to do first is I need to go ahead and grab the image capture tool. And there's a couple ways I can get it. I can either open a browser and go to my Smart Imager console. And from here, I can click console and tools. And that'll bring me to the tools directory. And from here, I can go ahead and grab the image capture tool. Another way I can get it is I can open up a file explorer and just browse to my Smart Imager server and it'll be in the uploads share. And from there, I'll have a file called SI Image Capture. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that tool. And what that tool is gonna do is it's gonna start up and it's gonna ask me what the name of my server is. So I just put in either the IP address or my server name. And in this case, my Smart Imager server name is SI Demo. And I click Next. At this point, you can update the version of the operating system you're running with patches, not necessarily going from one version to another. In other words, uh, you can patch that system. And if I click Launch here, it will, update, it will launch the Windows update. And I can then install patches as I need to. For this demo, I'm not gonna update the patches. I will go ahead and click Next here after I've updated. And it'll ask me if I want to put any drivers on the Smart Imager server. So if I'm using my reference computer as a physical computer and I don't have a driver pack ready for it, I can go ahead and use this to launch the web console, which will bring me into the driver capture page. And from the driver capture page, I can just go new capture and I'll choose a vendor pack import. And let's say I'm going to be using an elite desk. So I'll just type in elite desk. And let's say I needed the elite desk 800 G2. I could go ahead and click here and it'll download those drivers for me, create that driver pack. So when I'm done with my image capture, those drivers are already, already gonna be there for me. At this point, I don't need to do any drivers, so I'll go ahead and click Next. And if you haven't already put your reference computer into audit mode, this image capture tool will put it into audit mode for you. So it does require a reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and click reboot. Sysprep is gonna open and it's going to use the audit flag and reboot my computer. Now, when my computer reboots, it's gonna to try to log in as the local administrator. It may prompt you for a password here. Something else I forgot to mention is that Prior to audit mode, if your reference computer is a domain join computer, the image capture tool will warn you about it being domain joined and ask if you want to have it removed from the domain, which is always a good idea because your capture is actually gonna be cleaner than if you domain joined that reference computer. So for future thought, when creating a reference computer, don't join it to the domain. Now that it's logged in, sysprep starts, the image capture tool comes up and closes sysprep for us, and then we come to the customize stage. At this point, I can install any applications I want or customize the background or perhaps put in some more settings. For this demonstration, I'm not gonna customize it at all, but keep in mind if I do, and let's say I install an app that requires a reboot, the image capture tool will persist through that reboot and come right back up to this customized screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next here. And one of the items in Windows 10 is the integration with the Windows Store. 
And as we get into more iterations of Windows 10, that store becomes more and more integrated. Well, the store uses something called a side-loaded application or an AppX package. Each AppX package needs to be provisioned correctly, whether it's for a single user or for all users. But there are times when AppX packages get side-loaded and they're not provisioned correctly. If they're not provisioned correctly, sysprep will break, which is a known issue in Windows 10. So we've worked very hard to make sure that the image capture tool doesn't break sysprep and we can remove those unprovisioned AppX packages for you. And what you're gonna to have to do is run a check and it's gonna iterate through all of the AppX packages and see if there are any that are sideloaded that are not provisioned correctly. Once it comes back, it'll let you know if it found any, and at that point, you can choose to remove those packages. It's always a good idea to remove those packages because if there are any AppX packages that are not provisioned correctly, they will break sysprep and you won't be able to use your image. All right, it looked like it finally finished and it found a few of the AppX packages, but only one that was not provisioned correctly. And what I wanna do is I wanna to choose to remove that package It'll go ahead and unside load that and provision it correctly, remove it from the system. And once it's done, it'll tell you, hey, I've completed that. We can click OK and then click Next. At this point, we need to decide for a name for our image. So I'm just going to name this, how about custom image and then uh, Windows 10, how about 1709, perfect. That name is gonna be used in the Smart Imager console. And I'll go ahead and click Start. Now at this point, SysPrep is going to run and it's going to run with both the generalized and out-of-box experience flags. And it's also gonna tell it to reboot. But the image capture does more than that. It's also setting a temporary RAM drive on your reference computer. So when it reboots, it's going to reboot into that temporary drive and WinPE will come up. Once WinPE comes up, the Smart Imager client will notice that you wanted to run an image capture and it'll capture the image once in WinPE. Now this step here, which is the generalized phase for SysPrep may take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna pause the video here and we'll come back once my system has rebooted. Okay, my system is now restarting and it's loading into that RAM drive and WinPE will now go ahead and initialize. You'll notice that uh, during the WinPE setup here, it's running just as it would if it were running uh, an image deployment. But it does notice that it's detected in image capture and immediately my image capturing tool comes up. It's going to connect to the server and it's going to capture the image from my reference computer and then push it on to that server with the correct name for me. It also will be uh, usable right away as well, but this step here takes a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video again here while it's capturing my image. And as soon as it's done, we're gonna start the video back up. We're gonna go to the console. We're gonna use that custom image. At this point, my custom image capture has completed and it's just waiting for a reboot. A pop-up does come up to let me know that uh, the capture was successful and that it is placed in the uploads directory and available on my Smart Image console. So I'll go ahead and click OK, and that will go ahead and shut down my computer. I'm finished with that for now, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into the Smart Image console and if I look here, I can go to components images and we should see that custom image that we just captured. And sure enough, here it is. And if I look at it, it'll tell me uh, where it is. It's gonna be in a folder called custom. Now, if I open up that folder, I can, and let me browse here for a second and get there. All right, here's my Smart Imager server, and if I browse there, I can look at the program file, Circs, Smart Imager, and if I look under Repositories, Uploads, I no longer have my image here, 
but rather if I go to repositories images and then custom, that's where my whim is and I can check that GUID against the GUID that it is here. So at this point, what it's done is it's captured the computer, uh, captured the image rather, put it up into the uploads directory. From there, it copied it from the uploads directory, put it into my image repository under a custom folder, and then made it available for use in the Smart Imager console. The only thing that's left for me to do is set a compatibility on it. So in this case, I'm gonna set the compatibility for a user prompt and click save, but you can set your compatibility to whatever you want. If this is your only image, you don't have to set a compatibility to it and it will become your default image. But the other thing I have to do is I have to add it to my build. So I'll go ahead and choose my default build here. I'll go to images and make sure that I've added that custom image that I just captured to the default build so it's available in my environment. And now the only thing that's left for me to do is to run a publish. So in summary, we use the image capture tool to capture a custom image from a reference computer. The image capture tool took that image, placed it onto the Smart Imager server for us. The Smart Imager console made it available to us and all we needed to do was add it to our build and publish. Once we did that, it's now available for any deployment. If you have any questions about capturing a custom image, just shoot us an email at support at smartimager.com or if you have any questions on any other items or any features you would like to see in next versions, just send us an email at contactus at smartimager.com.